Hello, everyone. Welcome to 96 Ford's Open Hours. My name is Robert Wolf. This is episode 75, and today is October 19th. Chugging along into the end of the year. Uh, very exciting episode ahead of us. Uh, you might see some cool technology there on one of the camera feeds. Uh, the folks we're going to be interviewing today, uh, Rafael and Gustavo from 1RF. We're going to hear a lot from them, but as usual, moving on into the segment, I have some announcements and some recaps from last week's episode. All right, we'll dive right into that. I want to just apologize, first of all, more importantly to uh, the folks from 1RF, as well as anyone else who had a chance to visit our uh, Open Hours webpage this week. We were having uh, several glitches going on, and we had to fix a bunch of stuff. So we only recently got the webpage updated, so now you can see if you want to read more about what we're about to talk about with the folks from 1RF, you can uh, tune in to, uh, or just go over to the 96boards.org forward slash open hours page. The content has now recently been updated. I want to remind you all that we are available throughout the week and during the episode on our, our IRC channels. That is a uh, hashtag 96 boards and hashtag open hours. So if uh, you have any questions and you don't want to post it into the blue jeans chat, you can always go to the IRC channel or you can, or if you're on Facebook, you can post it into the IRC channel uh, or you can just chat with us throughout the week while we're not on broadcast, right? All right. I have a couple other reminders I wanted to go into, but more importantly, uh, last week, for those of you who did not get a chance to see us, uh, we talked to the folks from Dragon Wally. That is the video, Dragon Wally. Uh, with Cesar Meneses and Piccolo Kleber. I hope I'm pronouncing those right. But yeah, so we have uh, uh, the folks from Dragon Wall. You can watch their video there. And I have just started to finally push out a bunch of blogs. So if you go to the 96boards.org website and go to the blog section, I have caught up on, I think, from episodes 67 to 74. I just pushed out a bunch of blogs. There you can find... Uh, the chat logs for all of the content we had in the episode. You can also find uh, uh, various other bits of information as well as the contact information of our featured guests. Um, another uh, one that you can check out is the one the week before, which was with Elo Rivero uh, with Safe2Med, right? And if you just kind of go down the list, you'll see a bunch of other open hours updates. Great. Now, I have one last thing that I wanted to do here, but I think that we'll wait until the end of the segment. Uh, Ragnar uh, finally received his package with all, of, with all of the goodies we sent him for being the top open hours participant. So um, I think at the end of the segment, that'll be a better time. He's going to show us the unboxing. Now, I already know what was all in that box, but um, I'm kind of excited for him to show us as well. So uh, he, I think he has his camera. We've never had Ragnar's camera on before, I don't think. So this will be interesting. Um, he can show us what he got in that box, all the little goodies. That's it. I, I think I rambled on for about four minutes. So it's time to introduce our guests, right? I have uh, uh, Gustavo and Rafael here visiting us, right? Hello, Robert. Hello, How guys. Are you? I'm good, I'm good. Welcome to Open Hours. Thank you. At first, thank you for changes because we were not able to participate on that week because we are participating on the future call, and we won't be able if you have have not changes for this week. Thank you for that. No, of course, and yeah. So if you go back into the past episodes of Open Hours, you'll see that I was announcing them to, I believe, be our guests on the fourth of October, uh, one of those days uh, in the earlier of the month. But you guys were at Future Com. That was. A, Awesome conference. Did you guys have a lot of fun there? Yes, it's a very good one. Uh, a lot of people seeing our work there. And I think it's the uh, biggest conference in telecom in, in Latin America. So it's a, a very good one, yeah. I was going to try to make it down there. I didn't get there in time. Yeah. OK. Unfortunately. <laughs> so yes. so guys, real real quick. I, uh, we we got to do the introductions first, right? I mean, we want to get to know you, so maybe you can go one at a time. Just tell us okay. about yourself. Take take a little take a little time there. Okay, so uh, my name is Rafael Christ. I'm a computer engineer from Brazil, and I work at a company called OneRF, 
and now I'm also a PhD student at Unicamp, University, University of Campinas. Yes, uh, I am an industrial engineer, uh, and then uh, I did my master in Unicamp, and now I'm currently a PhD student also in electrical engineering. And uh, Rafael and I start to work together uh, with uh, this project, uh, the sensor network, uh, one and a half years ago. One and a half years ago. Yeah. And then we now uh, are, I think we are ready to, to start our real company. So, yeah, the owner F is just born. Awesome. So you led right into my next question, right? We want to know, we want to know what one RF is, right? Uh, the the name itself sounds pretty cool for for the people who are kind of attuned with, I guess, engineering or frequencies. You can do RF stands for radio frequency, right? right. I'm guessing. <laughs> so so what is one RF? What's the company about? Uh, uh, one RF is a startup company from Brazil, and we aim to aim to develop uh, IP connectivity for applications such as smart city, smart grid, and industry 4.0. And for that, we have developed a small radio module. Uh, we'll, we'll show in detail details in the presentation, but it's a very small uh, module. And this module is able to form a six low pan mesh networks in the field. So it's and also uh, it has a, a, an IP address in each module, so we're able to ping it from the internet. And the module has several interfaces like uh, digital inputs, digital outputs. Analog inputs and I do I to see SPI what you uh, are so uh, the idea is that you can embed it this module in, in different applications. Yeah, so just to summarize what uh, one RF provide is a full IP uh, connectivity for any application. You just embed your module in the application and the device will be online. Just to summarize so that. So if I if I'm understanding correctly, you guys didn't just buy that module; you made it yourself. Yes, both uh, hardware and firmware. And the software, yes. Very uh, nice, very nice. A gap in the market that this this kind of modules are expensive, and we are trying to make it very cheap, so everyone can have access and embed is in any any possible application. To real have the Internet of Things, anything can embed this module and be online. Awesome. So now you guys, I heard something about you having a presentation uh, available for us. Was this something you're going to go through or because I have a bunch of questions, but maybe your presentation will answer some of those before I. Do, okay. do you have a presentation? Uh, yes. Can I go to that right now? Yeah. Yeah. So if you hit the share screen icon up okay. there. Now, but while they're getting this set up, I just want to let everyone know, similar to kind of what this October theme has been, uh, we've had uh, already two guests come on who came out of this uh, awesome, uh, amazing uh, Brazilian partnership program that happened in Brazil several months ago. And the first one was Ilo Rivera with Safe to Med, then uh, the uh, Dragon Wally team with uh, their Dragon Wally project, both were projects that came out of this this uh, this com competition contest. That we're not not supposed to call it that, but it was like a partnership program, very cool partnership program. These guys also came out of this program, and I mean, uh, uh, I think that I think that um, it's been really exciting so far to see all these cool prototypes. Let's see. Okay. So presentation's up. I can see it. Okay. Uh we will show some slides that uh, uh, we'll have like a overall viewing of uh, the gateway that we built based on the dragon board and also we will show some real applications uh, using this gateway today so i think like the presentation uh, it's good for everybody to understand what we are, we are doing 
and then we have the examples, okay? Okay, you, you you said you'll have a demo for us? Yes, yes, we have the we have the demo. Nice. We have a second camera that 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 is focusing on the panel and and it will be very easy to show like the all, all the demos and different applications that we can use this data. Great. So okay, let, let's just, let's start. Uh, for the uh, for the, the Embarcados and Falcon Brazil contest that we participated, we have developed a smart gateway based on the Dragon Board 14C. As you can see in the picture, uh, at the bottom of the picture, you have the Dragon Board. And, and on top of the Dragon Board, you have a mezzanine that we have designed. And this mezzanine uh, connects the Dragon Board to a uh, 3G 4G modem, and also connects the Dragon Board to our radio module. So, uh, with this mezzanine, the Dragon Board uh, will be able to talk to the uh, wireless sensor network uh, in the field, and also with the modem, it, it is able to connect it to the cloud. And just some specs about the, the mezzanine. Uh, it has a, a small microcontroller on the mezzanine, and this microcontroller uh, monitors all the voltages on the board, and also it monitors the dragon board, just in case if the board halts uh, or have some software problem, so the microcontroller will be able to reset the board. And it also has some uh, protection for uh, for overcurrent or over voltage, because the idea is to install this gate in remote areas or industrial area areas. So you, you you don't want to go there very often. You need this hybrid to be very autonomous. And what motivated us to use the Dragon Board was uh, was its uh, high processor capability uh, because we have a, a, a gateway that we have developed before the, 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 this gateway. It's based on a small ARM processor and the gateway is just, it's, it is just a, a holder. Uh, it, it routes information from the internet to the sensors, to the radio modules and vice versa. And with the Dragon Board, we hope that we're able to to have a, a gateway that's able to do edge processing, which means that this gateway based on Dragon Board is able to collect data, raw data from sensor, sensors or devices in the network, and the information will be processed uh, in, inside the gateway without the need to connect to, to the cloud. And another advantage. So Okay. So I, I just wanted to ask you this. So, I mean, you know, I know that for the, 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 the partnership program, you were, I guess, in essence, you know, you had to use a dragon board, right? That was something that you had to use. And that just happens to be also based on the 96 board specification. But now the contest is over. And I'm wondering, I, I, I kind of am hoping that maybe you can give me just some I guess you're saying a little bit about it, but what are the, the key aspects that are keeping you using the Dragon Board or that's that's enticing you to, uh, or that's attracting you to the Snapdragon chipset in itself? Like, is there any specific features or specific things that, that, you are, that you're appreciating about maybe the 96 board's form factor or the fact that it's a Dragon Board or the fact that it's a Snapdragon processor? Is there anything in, in particular that's that's keeping you using this? Because I mean, you could just switch to another dev platform, right? If you really wanted to yes, at this point. The, the thing is we want to have a smart gateway. Uh, it, it's uh, edge processing is a keyword for us here because we don't want to be so independent of the internet. We want to be able to process everything locally. It's not on the device itself, on the very end of the application, for example, in, in our modules, even though we can do some small processing there, but we want to, to make our system autonomous. So uh, we want to send only 
information that's really important to internet and run everything in the gateway. Uh, with other uh, devices, we could, uh, just what Rafael told us before, our uh, previous uh, gateway only able to roll the information to, to the internet. And we don't want just to do that. We want to have some processing on the gateway. Yeah, like uh, the, 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 to answer, I guess, the question from Robert, the key, uh, the, our decision uh, to keep the, the Dragon board uh, is because of this, uh, also because of this uh, Qualcomm's NP, which is the Snapdragon Neural Processing Engine, and which is a, which is a software framework from Qualcomm that enables you to very easily train uh, neural networks, and then you are able to to move these neural networks to the to the Snapdragon platform, and you can run this locally without the need to connect it to the cloud. So uh, we think that, that in the future, right now, but also in the future, it will be very important that you have like complex decisions and, and data analysis in the gateway. So you yeah. can run uh, 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 lots of complex uh, applications uh, and you have all this running on, uh, on the gateway without the, the need for human intervention. Yeah, and that was uh, that was actually Mani's uh, uh, question in the chat. He put, you know, are you guys using Qualcomm's NPE SDK? And so that's that's um, something there. Yeah, and then uh, so now Todd wants to know what what's in the Qualcomm NPE SDK? What are the advantages over any others on the market, open source or commercial? So have you experimented with any other? Um, NPE SDKs? I got no. you, Todd. <laughs> no, but uh, that, that, that advantage uh, is that like uh, it's it's a software uh, framework that like it's very easy to use. Like you, you don't need to be an expert in machine learning if you have a problem to solve. You can learn how to use this framework. And you can train the neural network to to solve your problem. And also, one of the uh, I think the key uh, advantages uh, over another uh, of other AI frameworks is that uh, the Qualcomm's NPE framework it runs uh, very well on Qualcomm hardware. Uh, when you're running the algorithm. In a Snapdragon, it will use the CPU, the GPU, and the DSP. And it's very low power, also com comparable to another, other frameworks. Because most of the frameworks, they are based to run these algorithms on a, on a ser in a, inside a server, you know, uh, ser uh, a server in the cloud. But the Qualcomm's NPE uh, framework, uh, uh, was made towards mobile devices and Snapdragon platform. So that's the 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 the, the, the key uh, advantage. I, I hope that got your question there answered, Todd. Um, so a, a couple more things have popped up in here. So I, I'll go to the question first. But Leonardo's asking, and and if these things are going to be answered in your slide, I like it that people are asking questions. So you know I'm fine with it. But um, are are you using? Are you? I'm I'm going to try to pronounce this. I've never heard of it. Are you using Contiki OS uh, to build the mesh network? Are you are you familiar with that? No, no. We are we are using a. a, a, a... We we develop our firmware. Uh, it's based on all uh, internet the uh, standard protocols, uh, but it's a proprietary one. Uh, that the one we are developing. We are using, uh, We're using some libraries uh, from from Texas instruments, and, and we have a lot of, a lot in the in the software uh, uh, to to have this mesh network. Okay, cool. He says thank you. 
Awesome. Well, so I guess let's let's just keep going into the slideshow. Uh, I think that I'm pretty sure a lot of stuff will get answered in here as well. Okay. So uh, in the next uh, slide, we have just um, how the connected solution works out. So uh, uh, at the left, you have like the what we call the sensor node, which is always uh, our radio module connected to a power source and connected, for instance, to a sensor. And all these sensor nodes, they, uh, they are able to form this RF mesh network in the field using six low point protocol. Uh, in the middle, you have like uh, a, a embedded web server that you can use it to control parameters of the sensor node or also to read sensors or do some uh, actuation. And we also work with the co-op protocol too. So we can access directly the sensor node in the field through our web server or through co-op. And in the right, we have the, the gateway that, that today is based on the Dragon Ball 410C. So the gateway, it has uh, at the bottom the radio module that talks to the sensors in the field. It has the mezzanine and it has the Dragon Board 410C and the 3G 4G modem to talk to the internet. Also, uh, in, the, in the next slide, we have an overall like, architecture of, of, of this solution. If someone has a question, uh, we can answer, but I, I will not take so many time in the slides because we want to show the, 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 the application. Yeah, so uh, I'll just explain a little bit about the, the architecture we are using. So uh, what we have is the sensor nodes. For any application here, we have three examples. And this establish a mesh network, and this network is connecting to the gateway. Uh, this, we are showing this slide, uh, uh, outdoor casing for the gateway. Because, for example, in street lighting application, the, this uh, gate will be on the pole on the street, so it has to to handle rain and winds and like the the weather, and that's why we are using this casing, for example. Or even for industrial applications, you have to to have a robust casing. And inside that casing, we have the dragon board with the mezzanine, and we also have a battery pack for if the uh, power supply uh, fails, we still have a, our system can still run. And this is connected to the internet, like Rafael just told this. So we are going to go through some, uh, explain a little bit about the applications we have done already. So the first one here on the top left is a level sensor. Uh, which is the application we were participating on the contest uh, we told in the beginning of the stop. So we have this, uh, it's an ultrasonic sensor, and we can measure distance using that. Uh, using distance, we have many possible applications. For example, we can measure the water level in a river, for example. We can use this to measure the level of trash can, so we can check if it's empty or full to make the collecting route uh, more efficient, for example. We can also use this uh, in parking lots to check if uh, the car is uh, parking there or not. Uh, also, another application is this industrial module. So uh, it can be attached to any standard sensor, industrial standard sensor, uh, both in digital and analog inputs. Uh, and then we can send this data uh, to the internet or even to the gateway, just to the gateway to process uh, this over there. We have applications using smart meters, uh, this meter that uh, every house has to, to just to measure the amount of the energy the, the house is spending. And we can send all this data to, to the uh, internet so that service uh, provider of the energy will be able to, to check how much uh, every house is consuming. And we also can control the smart meter using this module. We can uh, switch on and off the, 
the energy in a particular house, for example. And we also have applications using street light. Uh, we developed this photo cell that goes on top of uh, LED lights, uh, and we can use this to remote control the the light. Uh, and we can also measure some uh, electrical parameters on the, the, the lights. We can measure how much energy uh, the, the lights are using. We can measure the voltage, current. Uh, we can uh, dim the light, so it can uh, change the, the brightness of the light, and, and so on. So this is just overview of the applications we already have done. We can send you alarm if the the light has failed. Okay. Yeah, so oh, is, is that is that the end of the presentation? Uh, yeah. Yes, just a quick round because uh, we want to answer the question, so we made it very quick. Yeah, so I, so it would be cool if, first of all, if, if you wouldn't mind providing me with that presentation after the show, that way I can post it in in the blog, but as well, if you have any other contact information that you would like to share with uh, the folks that are watching, you can also send that to me as well, and I'll, I'll include that in the blog. But while you were talking, some questions did pop up, and I want to go back to the discussion we were having just a minute ago about, where is that, about um, NPE on the Dragon Board. And so uh, Ali mentions that he says he, as far as he knows, NPE is not supported on the 410C. Um, it's not available on the Linux release. So is this? Yeah. No, it's current not available, uh, but it uh, will be in the future very soon, as we know. Uh, and actually, it's currently available if you are using Android on your board. It's not available okay. or any. OS, but on uh, Android, it's okay. You can use it already. Okay, perfect. Just answering Leonardo there. Perfect. So, so Ali, you were right. It's not available on Linux, but it will be available soon, hopefully. And uh, and right now, it is available on the Android OS. Uh, Todd Thal asks, does it conform? So I think he's saying, is OpenCI dot so a c shared library file like many of the lib dot so files example ask ubuntu.com questions and he shared a link there uh i think that Monty answered that and said yes of course <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to find the questions i'm not sure <laughs> if any of these got answered we'll keep going down the list let's see uh john mark why did you not use standards like laura or sigfox or narrowband Okay, uh, we have some uh, motivations to use the architecture we are using right now. It is, uh, we want to solve a problem that we have in Brazil right now. We are not looking to long future, we want to think that's cheap and works right now. For, for example, City Fox, we still don't have the, the cover in the whole area and uh, things like this, but we are not so uh, attached to this model. Actually, this model we have is able to handle Sigfox. Uh, we can change it by using this, just the software. Uh, it's ready for that. So our architecture is not a fixed one. We can change it. We want to provide the connectivity. So the end user won't even know what connectivity we are using behind the scenes. But uh, we want to, to our solution to be just plug and play. So the user uh, on the front end will just know that it has an IP address and everything will be a TI uh, question. So uh, for example, the company already has a collection software for anti metering. So if you change the, the way that they collect the data it will be a huge problem. So we just want to give them IP and uh, uh, URE that it is enough. Just you just need this to connect to to get the data you want. So in this the, the, the particular case right now we are using six Lopan and FTP6 and this kind of thing you just showed us. You just showed. Uh, it. I, I but you can like, change uh, the uh, 
People always ask, uh, ask us about this, why don't you use LoRa or CDFox? We're not defending any technology. We could use NBIoT also, but what we're trying to do right now is solve a very specific problem uh, that our uh, mesh network for, for this kind of problem is the best solution. When you're using this in industrial environment, you need, uh, it's better to use a RF mesh network because you have a lot of noise and things are always changed. Sometimes the radio is able to talk to the gateway, but if you stop uh, something in the front of the gateway, it will not talk any longer. But if you have a mesh network, it will talk to the, to the center that is next to it, then talks to the gateway. For instance, but in very crowded cities, uh, uh, it's it's not easy to, to, to get the radio signal to the gateway. So, uh, like like for for instance, for the street light, the radio model just will talk to the next to next radio model, next to pole, the next pole, then it reach the 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 gateway. If you could do this with six blocks. But we, but we think right now for for those solutions that we are addressing here in Brazil, uh, an RF mesh network is a better solution. But we're, we're, well, I think but... I think you guys I think you guys are touching on something that's a little bit you know grander than this, right? Because in general, a lot of times engineers in in the process of developing some new solution, they seem to forget about what their target is. And a lot of times it comes down to building. I think we talked talked about this when Elo was on with Safe Med. Is that you know who is your consumer? Who is who who is your target? And you know, being in Brazil, your target might be different than someone in Canada or Mexico or U.S. or in Europe in general. And so you have to always focus on your target because they're the people who are going to consume it, right? Um, yes. There are certain things that are global, but but uh, it's and in Europe. You have uh, uh, dozens of millions of smart meters connected to the cloud, and they are using RF mesh network. They are not using LoRa, CDFox, CDFox, and and mm -hmm. IoT right now. So right, right, just because right now this is the best solution. But uh, as Rafael told, you are not defending any particular uh, technology. Radio technology. Yeah, we could change if. Uh, we see that another one would fit better the their tetra we we are using now. Cool. So, uh, do you have a demo for us? Is this uh, what are we looking at here? You want to explain what you have what you have showing? Yeah. Uh, first, yes. Are, are you guys seeing the the panel right now? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So here is a. Uh, smart meter that is uh, developed by one of our partners also here in Campinas. Uh, this, uh, our modules in, inside this right here uh, is one just like uh, Rafael is going to show you right now. So we have this. This is our radio module. And this is this just a me model, mechanical adaptations uh, to go inside the, the meter. The radio model is connected here. It's inside this, this Smart electrical meter. And here we have our gateway. It's the dragon board just below these mezzanine and these modules here. And then uh, here, uh, this thing is a distance sensor, the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, yes, uh, I'm just going to show one. The, the one just like this. This guy here. So oh, okay. this it's an evolution from the, this is the one we did for the contest, <laughs> but had no casing, uh, and now okay, we have this cool casing we, here. We did a yeah. new version. Yeah. Okay, and here is our industrial module. So it is just like this inside. So it's our radio and some electronics to. Uh, Make the signal uh, ready for this 3.3 volts module we have. All, all, all the boards and the hardware that we are seeing here were developed by us, except from the electric meter. Everything else here is we design and develop in Brazil. 
Yeah, and now wow, we are just very nice. from the smart photocell. Ah, yeah, I almost forgot. We we have this here. Is the smart photocell? Uh, we don't have the poll here right now to show. It's installing our uh, office in but in another part of the the city here, so it's not easy to show. Uh, but this is what goes on top of the LED light. This is the range module. And this is model one here is the meter module. So we can measure the electrical signals on the photocell. And uh, it, this, this radio can, like Jim, the, the LED light can control and, uh, everything just like uh, I told before. So this is the other oh, hardware nice developer. Sensor. Yeah, the, in, uh, the, the first one, the, the main one is the light sensor because it's, if, also, it is a smart photo cell, but it can also work uh, uh, as a conventional yes, photo cell. As a conventional one. Okay. Uh, now to to show the our networking here. Uh, show on your screen the. Okay. Let me. I will share this screen like this screen again. So there's oh, okay. Perfect. I was going to yeah. say, uh, oh, and we can still see the camera too. Perfect. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so uh, can, can you see the... Ah, okay. The, oh, okay. Yeah. This is just a, a simple example. We have like a server in the internet, and we have here like the Google Maps API. So we have uh, three applications that are installed in the panel. Uh, we can see that, that uh, those applications in this uh, uh, website. So we have here the, the, the industrial module that Gustavo showed us. We have the distance sensor and the, and the electric meter. Yeah. So, for example, uh, go to the uh, industrial sensors. Okay. Uh, can you see the, that pop-up in the, the screen? So it's yeah. showing the temperature of this sensor here. Uh, if you guys can see, we have this temperature sensor here, and we, we have this digital optical sensor here. So, for example, it's showing the, the we have 13, uh, in the count of the sensor is 13 right now. If I, like, for a few times I pass my finger in front of this, it's, have to increment the count, the count, and see it's like six twelve. Uh, actually, it was counting before the screen was uh, was not refreshed. So okay, so this is one of the things. Uh, and is that really the temperature down there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can you see that? Man, it's hot. <laughs> and it's a little windy, and it's fresher inside than it's outside here in Brazil. <laughs> uh, here uh, we have this smart meter, this right here, and Rafael is going to operate it. So he just clicked on the uh, to switch on the the meter, and you can see this light right here just uh, is is now on because he just switched on the the, the meter. So uh, we have some parameters here how much energy it's already passed to the meter and the the current the voltage so uh, all parameters are here uh, so uh, as i told you it can be used for the company that's providing the energy for the city uh, it's a very useful thing for example to do the voltage so we can measure, they can measure how good are the service they are serving so I'll click again to, I will turn off the, the, the light and the, the, this light is representing the, the client. Uh, yeah, the, the, the load home, on the, uh, the home, the, the house. So just clicking, yes. it goes off. Yeah. And now I will go. Wow, so, so you can just give all, I mean, I think that they, isn't it right now, at least I know in some situations where if your electricity gets turned on or off, they have to send someone to your house to manually deactivate it? And, and, and yeah, this is all going to be uh, teleoperated. And as you can see, this was uh, pretty fast. And what we have here is the website is hosted on the web. 
and the smart meter is connected through a radio through our radio network to the gateway, and the gateway is connected to the internet using a 3G, 4G modem. And even though it's very fast, the, the, the response. And in, in the application of the... the yeah, it, just, just, it's not connecting directly from here to here. It goes from the meter to this radio. It goes to the server that's, uh, as I told you, in your office, and it changes the database there. And when the, the system realized that the database is changed, it sent back a signal and then changed the smart meter view. So the latency of the, uh, the snap is, is very low. You can operate it very quickly. So let me change the camera. No, it's, it's the... Yeah, go to the camera. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what's happening in, in the, the, the meter application is that the, the, the radio module it connects to the wired part of the meter and it talks to the meter in a very complex protocol uh, which has a, a, a CRC and encryption, CRC check and encryption. And when it receives a, a, com a command from the radio, the, uh, it will talk a lot to the meter and then execute the command. And also, we will make all the readings from 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 the meter. And you send to you just the information that, that that you want. Like for instance, the 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 current uh, the the, the voltage, voltage, the power consumption right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So so you got you got some questions popping up on on the chat here. Uh, all there's three of them. All of them are from Todd. It says, uh, what, what are what? Sorry, what are what's the complete list of all sensor data inputs? Example: temperature, humidity, pollutants, air density, etc. That's the first question. So I think you were showing a list of 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 a bunch of stuff from the website, but also, um, I mean, what's the complete list that is available through this particular system? I would imagine. And then, is there enough I.O. to expand to other sensor data? Yeah, uh, we have here, this, those are connected. The industrial module is connected for in one digital input and one analog input right here. Uh, this is the temperature sensor. Uh, but this is using just two GPIOs of our module. Uh, and can you guys see, it's, this camera doesn't focus closer distance, but I think as you can see, all these golden uh, pins around the modules are GPIOs. So we have here wired, SPIE, uh, we have uh, I2C. I2C, we have uh, digital inputs and outputs, we have ADC inputs, so we can do whatever we want using this board. We can attach it to any kind of sensor, but this is a 3.3 volts, and if you have, if you want to connect to a, a specific sensor that, for example, these industrial sensors, it, they are 24 volts. We have to, to, to uh, like, uh, change the, the data range, the, the signal range, to be able to fit in this board. As soon as these sensors are conditioned to this board, we can connect any kind of sensor in here. Okay, so the next the next question, I think that answers that question. So basically, you're saying that you can pretty much hook up any anything you want. Makes sense. I mean, not only that, if there were only GPIOs available and you had other, you know, pin sets there, you could even expand that on even more. But um, the next question, uh, this is actually a good question, and and this feeds into kind of 96 boards and the and the theme of path to product, but. When will this be available to purchase? And I mean, as Todd put it, when will this be available to purchase the entire system on something like Amazon? And Leonardo then adds, how much would this system cost? Do you have a projected price already? I mean, I know this, uh, I'm not sure, is this the beginning phases or are you are you almost ready to bring this to market? What the, 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 the thing is in Brazil, we need this uh, regulation system here that uh, it's called Anatel. And this is an organization that uh, you have to obey some rules on the 
RF rules to be able to sell the, this module here. We are in the last uh, step to finish this the homologation of the, our module, and as soon as it's done, we can we are able to sell it here in Brazil. Uh, to sell it uh, for other countries, I don't know about the laws. Maybe you have to to obey something in particular that we are not sure. Yes. Uh, well, you'll need to get the different certifications for, for each country, just like Cesar just mentioned. So like the Anatel is similar to the FCC in the US. So you would need to get the FCC certification and then there's one in Japan and there's one in Yes, but the Europe, thing is that basically copy the FCC. So if you are attending here, of course, you'll be attending US. Uh, our, our, one of our goals is to be a uh, how to say that? Alliance, the Wise Alliance. Some alliance. So we are going the way to be a Alliance member, so our module will fit any specification. Uh, just as I told you, we are not homologated here to sell in Brazil yet, uh, but we are on the last step to finish it. Uh, as soon as it's done, we are starting selling this module. Uh, it's very good to know that. Uh, People are interested in buying these modules and actually are the, the whole solution because uh, one of the things you can do is sell on uh, Amazon, for example. Uh, uh, the, 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 the cost for produce the, the radio module in Brazil right now goes around nine or ten US dollars. Okay. So really low cost. Yes, if you compare to maybe, I don't know, uh, Ziggy, for example, that actually in Brazil, I think it's about $30. Uh, we are about one third of the price of them. So what, yeah. we, what we have worked a lot, we said in the software, because you have, you have in the board just one IC. That the IC is the radio transceiver, and also you have a microcontroller. And this microcontroller is has our IP, uh, our connection, connectivity stack, uh, I can say, and also it holds the application. So you have the application and the communication in just one IC. And they are running uh, all together. Yeah, uh, that's the only reason we are so cheap. Yeah, that, that's the reason. You don't need a, a, a you, you, you can use, but you don't need to use an external microcontroller or external processor. So it's it's not just a radio transceiver. Uh, uh, you can have like the application. When the, 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 the radio module is connected to the smart meter, it talks to the to the meter in the meter's protocol and then it give you gives you the information back using quark protocol or HTTP. When the the radio module is embedded in the industrial sensor uh, it can read the sensor, and in, in, this, in this application, you have like, as Gustavo told, a, a photo sensor, but it also, you, you have here, you are counting how many, how many times something is passing in front of the, of, of the photo sensor. Yeah. So we can embed some intelligence in this application, because we, we developed this industrial model for a, a industry in Brazil, and they make soap. And, and they, they, they need to many monitor they, they need to monitor the temperature in, in, in some stages of the soap production and also they need to count uh, how many soaps are passing in the line and and, and then you have a, just very simple rules that are inside the software of the radio model so it counts and it measures the, the temperature and every and if everything is okay it's just logging but if something is out of the of, of the range that it was programmed to, it will send you, you an alarm. Yeah. To, to sell the module, uh, we also maybe want feedback from you. It's uh, our firmware, we can do whatever we want with it. Uh, and also, as someone told about what firmware we are using, we can either sell the module, just the hardware, or you can put our firmware inside it. So if you sell the, the module, anyone can use whatever firmware they want. Uh, it's compatible to uh, several kind of uh, firmwares in, on the market, and even open source ones. And 
But if you want to sell, we don't know if it's better if you sell only the hardware or you can put a general generic firmware inside the, the module just to send, for example, digital, the, the state of the digital inputs or uh, generic. Yeah. yeah, we could do both of them. If, one, if someone wants to buy it, can just tell us what features they want in the, the firmware and we can program and then sell the, this module. Some firmware inside it already. Sorry, uh, my, uh, my, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's my headphones. I'm getting a little bit of an echo here. So, um, so, so, guys, that's that's really cool. I, I just want to let everyone know I did share a lot of the links here in the chat. So, for for those of you who would like to follow up or learn more about all of this, uh, you have the one RF website, which is one rf.com.br forward slash index. That depending on the language, I'm guessing that, that will forward you to certain places. But then you have uh, the one RF GitHub and the one RF Instructables page. So I would suggest, you know, please take your time, go check that, go check that stuff out. There's a lot of cool information there. Um, uh, Rafael and Gustavo, we are coming up onto the top of the hour. Uh, uh, I apologize, my headset was messing up a little bit. I hope you all can. You guys still hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Fine. So so. So um, d please, is there any other questions, any other closing remarks? There were two things that popped up in the chat I wanted to address, um, but then hopefully anyone who would like to stick around, we can move into after hours. I have two things we need to do before we stop the recording. Um, but uh, first question is from Taya, do you have a link for the power monitoring details? What do you mean by that? A link to the, yes, well, we, well, we don't have the link, but uh, we can put the, the, the information in the, in the, in the, the website. Web, on the yeah. website. Okay, so Tayeth, if you just kind of monitor the website, they'll get that information up there for you. Uh, the next one is from Tim Hammer. Uh, he says he missed what the SOC is on the sensor module. Um, he, he recalls you mentioning something, uh, TIOS, simple link CC1310. Um, What's the what's the SOC on the sensor yeah. module? The no, the the, the chip you are using is CC thirteen ten, but we are using our proprietary firmware. Uh, but it's okay. you can uh, TI any type TIOS you want in, in the board. This yeah, is and then Todd. To the, sorry, go ahead. The, sorry, uh, it's. We are using the 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 hardware we are using is the CC1310, uh, but the firmware is, is our own firmware. But it's, if you, for for example, if you provide the hardware, you can record uh, a burn to the any firmware, uh, any TIOS firmware can be run on the this board. Excellent. And uh, the last thing here from Todd, he is wondering if there will be a ruggedized waterproof enclosure for the system like OtterBox. Um, and then he shared an OtterBox link. Um, I think that that the, the ruggedized uh, enclosure they have there, it's just opened up. But you do that, that enclosure that you're putting the dragon board and the mezzanine in, those are that's waterproof, right? That's a sealed yeah, industrial a, type. IP67, so it can be working even on, yeah. Here is one here. Excellent. With, with here. Um, I'm just going to show you. This is a metal casing. This, this hole in here. Ah. There you go. Nice. Cool. So, um, yeah, uh, Todd's recommending that you contact Otterbox. They have actually, Otterbox has a lot of really cool stuff there, too. Uh, he shared the link in the chat. Okay. No, so, you. You. yeah, so, um, guys, real quick. You know, you got a minute or two, and then we're going to move on to some of our closing announcements. But if you have any last, your last words, <laughs> if you have any last things you'd like to mention, uh, uh, please. Just for the opportunity, we... uh, to opportunity for us to present this for every people, yeah. Just thank you. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Thank no, you absolutely. I, 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 we really appreciate it. Honestly, I mean, uh, this is amazing. All of the stuff you guys are doing is awesome. I wanted to say one last thing about this team right here, the folks you're looking at right now, Rafael and Gustavo. These guys have been contributing massively to our new mezzanine community initiative. 
So if you have anything you would like to kind of contribute along with them, uh, they're guiding the templates for both Altium and Eagle uh, mezzanine boards, right? So we have this mezzanine initiative. I'll share the link in the chat in a moment, but these are our reviewers. So if you have Eagle or, or, um, or uh, Altium like mezzanines that you would like to contribute, it's their templates along with Cesar Menezes who contributed as well. But there's several, uh, th these guys are awesome. You know, I want to thank you for, for taking the time to come onto the show. It was amazing. Really cool work you guys are doing. And I look forward to writing this blog. Um, to getting to getting uh you know the stuff you guys are doing out to the world so it's, it's awesome thank you thank you i just let you know this mezzanine is uh available on the man uh mezzanine for me so you can download and make your own mezzanine like this one yeah and i'll share that really quickly while while we're talking about it so if you do go to the mezzanine initiative there you go and um like i said these two guys they're maintaining uh, uh, as reviewers for the, for the, um, uh, uh, <laughs> for Altium and Eagle. There you go. So uh, check that out. And it's a really cool initiative. We meet every two weeks now or so uh, live on Blue Jeans and we do uh, discussions and we try to guide what we want out of the initiative together. So once again, thank you, 1RF, for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, so now we have two last things that we're going to do before we move into after hours. And I really hope Gustavo and Rafael will hang around. Uh, we can answer questions after the recording turns off. That's kind of what we do. I pour myself into the coffee. But before that, two things. First thing, uh, I want to announce next week's, uh, next week's um, show. And that is going to be with, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to say the last name, Ali, I'm sorry, but it's Ali Galamlu. Uh, and he wants to give us a quick two-minute introduction to what he'll be talking about next week. So we have him on the call. I hope he'll speak up. And then right after that, we have our 96 Boards Open Hours uh, Loot Box winner, uh, Ragnar, who is basically our seasoned Loot Box winner, our seasoned Open Hours regular. And he's going to share the unboxing of his, uh, of his, of his loot. I'm, I'm excited to see this. I want to see how, how he's going to do this. But um, Ali, are you are you available? Do you have a second to talk? Uh, you're muted now, so I'm not sure. I think you just unmuted. We're not hearing you. Oh, nothing. I don't know. Is anyone else hearing him? No. Okay. So, Ali. So maybe what we'll do is while while Ali gets that all set up, let's move into Ragnar. Ragnar, what's up, man? Are you able? To, are you going to talk this time? Or are you just going to type? Uh, well, I try. If uh, if the fan noise isn't too annoying. No, no, we hear you. It's good. All right. So Ragnar, what do we got here? This is this is the stuff. I, this is the box that I sent him of just a bunch of a bunch of swag. <laughs> I guess uh, the Linara company mule network changed the box somewhere. Ah, that's true. So everything doesn't fit in the box. This, for example. <laughs> Yeah, so I got that at Comic Con. I thought that you might find that fun. It's from Family Guy, the cartoon, and then a red hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. So let's see. <laughs> we need like some intense Star Wars music for this. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Blue jeans. Okay, cool. Blue blue jeans shirt. One of the sponsors. One of the open hours sponsors. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a blue jeans blue thermos. thermos. Blue jeans too. Yeah. Uh, lace, I guess. Yeah, it's a big fleece. It's a, it's from uh, the Lenaro Connect in Budapest. So it's a red hat and Lenaro fleece, and it says the OS matters. 
for those of you who think the operating system matters. Sorry, Mani, you didn't get one. <laughs> you sure? That's a, that's a, yeah. Cool. That's uh, it? Empty? That's, that, that's not it. <laughs> that's, well, that fit in that box. Nice. So this this is the stuff, again, this is the stuff that we sent open hours in 96 boards. We sent this to Ragnar because he's our, he, he's just been attending open hours nonstop. So just a bunch of goodies, right? I don't know who will ever end up beating Ragnar at this point. So he might just keep getting goodies forever. <laughs> he just shows up every episode and has fun. So we'll have to yeah. find ways for some... Finally, it's to be patient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, blue jeans, uh, some kind of USB. Charger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, something to attach to. Oh, that's a phone? phone? That, yeah, that's a phone sling, yeah. Uh, Red Hat uh, headset or some kind of phone, I guess. Yeah, those are those are actually uh, what is it, the iPhone earbuds or whatever. But I guess Red Hat labeled them for <laughs> for Red Hat. Hmm. That was the prize for what was that? The giveaway for uh, this last Lenaro Connect. Yeah. Power. Uh, oh. Power, oh, power bank, block yes. and uh, yeah, there you go. Nice. What else do we got? God, I didn't realize I gave you that many things. I thought <laughs> she just keeps going. And then we finally come to the fun part. <laughs> So that that that's a that looks like some ninety six board stuff, I guess. Some audio mezzanine what is that? Yeah, audio mezzanine, I think. Okay, there you go. Nice. And then, oh, this was uh, this was from Sahaj. Sahaj had me throw that in in the last minute. Thank you, Sahaj. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's from that's from the Mezzanine Initiative. So that was created based on the initiative that, uh, like I was saying, Rafael and Gustavo are a part of. So uh, that was printed right out of that. Mm -hmm. The nitrogen. Nitrogen, yes. The nitrogen IoT board. Mm, something sensor. Oh, I know what that is. I got that at an Aero event. Um, it's pretty cool little sensor. In fact, I have it on my desk here too. Oh, I it? think I have to remove this. Oh yeah, so it's like a little, like a little Bluetooth. Uh, module this is this is what it is right here so you can see yeah there you go nice whoa wait is that the temperature at your house oh no okay that's not bad i thought 40 degrees that, that was going to be really hot okay nice is that it ragnar seems so thank you okay cool no, yeah, no, I, I want to also say that you should be expecting a Dragon Board 410C, a power supply, and there should have been a carbon in that box. I'm, I think Monty must have taken it out of there and, and for himself. But, <laughs> but no, we'll, we'll get you, we're going to get you your carbon, and then the Dragon Board 410C should be in the mail. Thank you so much, Ragnar, for being a big part of Open Hours. Uh, we're really grateful. I hope that you enjoy that swag. Please uh, feel free 
to um to let us know if you didn't like it. <laughs> but we'll be we'll be uh we'll be here every week, right? Um, now I, before everyone starts leaving, I feel bad, but please, Ali, are, are, did you get your did you get your uh your mic working? Hello, hey, you're really sound, Ali. Early. You're very muffled. Hello, can you hear me? We can barely hear you. It's it doesn't sound good. Okay. Yeah, we can't hear you. We're gonna need to do a sound check for next week. Oh uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? No. Ah. Okay. No, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to mute you because it was really loud and staticky. So Ali. Um, you and I, what we'll do is we'll meet up. Uh, we'll meet up probably maybe tomorrow or sometime early next week, and we'll have to do a sound check just to make sure that uh, that your that everything's in tuned with your with your microphones and everything. Uh, I will give a quick update um, on Ali's demo. So basically, what he did several weeks ago, and this is what who we're going to be talking to next week. Uh, it's Ali Galamlu, and I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing that right. He will be our featured guest next week, and he did a really cool project on uh, on a computer vision project. I believe that um, I'm trying to find the exact description here. However, uh, for those of you who are familiar, you can simply tune in to the or go visit the 96 Boards Open Hours website, and I will have that updated by Monday so you can see a full description. I'm pretty sure Ali will be able to provide us with a paragraph description on the uh, on the on what he'll be doing but yes there you go so deep learning on dragon board that is going to be a very hot topic i'm excited to see this one uh ali uh we're excited to have you and there you go even tensorflow so he's he's beating our applications engineers at getting tensorflow um mani and sahaj <laughs> i'm just i'm just messing with you guys i'm messing with you too much this this episode but yeah, so we'll have we'll have Ali uh, join us next week. Uh, please tune in. Um, if you have any questions, until then, we have uh, plenty of channels for you to reach us on. We have the 96 Boards forums. We have the 96 Boards uh, uh, IRC channel, the Open Hours IRC channel. You can of course find us on my email, uh, on the website, everywhere. <clears throat> but once again. Am I forgetting? It's okay, Ali. Don't worry about the mic problem. We'll, we'll figure that out. And um, once again, uh, thank you so much to 1RF uh, for joining us. Rafael, Gustavo, true pleasure having you on. Thank you for showing us the demo. Thank you very much for all the questions. Thank you very much for Ragnar for joining us on Open Hours every single episode since we started the community forum, which I did share for this week and sharing your out of the box uh, swag experience. Ali, we'll see you next week. I'm going to stop the recording now. We'll go into after hours. All right. Thank you.